Good morning, everyone. We begin again on a note that says, "Help of the doctors and for the doctors. The knowledge of health is very important." Very frankly, for the lockdown, Dr. Hiramath is no stranger to us. This is the third major session he's doing. I'd like to invite him to speak to us on how to proceed to take care of our own health and to help us to take care of the health of our patients. So I hand over the mic to Dr. Hiramath to start the proceed. Thank you, sir. Please do come. Uh, good morning to you all. Um, I think my talk is a bit long, around 35 to 40 minutes, so I'll, without much ado, I'll start straight away. And I give this talk on health uh, because of my lost hair and my gray hair both. So I'm probably in the 95th percentile by way of age, so I have some right to be a bit preachy. Uh, you may find this talk a bit preachy it's Sunday afternoon, so sermon like in health is of uh, health of the endothelium, so vascular health or let's say cardiovascular health. So it will all depend on the LDL, high blood pressure, mental stress, B12 deficiencies, sugars, and nicotine. And in women, of course, after menopause, estrogen deficiency leads to dysfunction and all related atheros cardiovascular atherosclerotic disease. And we all know how to manage all these aspects very well. But, uh, if you look at these two gentlemen, age 38, uh, typical IT sector, smoking type of man, eats vada pav at 2 a.m. in the morning. And everybody knows him, he's no more uh, with us, uh, BKS Iyengar. So you looked at their carotid intima media thickening. CIMT here is 0.84 and CIMT here is 0.58. That gives you the vascular age of these two people. And actually the vascular age is exactly the reverse. So much can be the difference to lifestyle can make to us if we follow certain things about diet, certain things about exercise, mental relaxation, maybe spirituality. And there is a myth that women don't suffer so much cardiovascular disease. The white bar is the breast cancer bar and the red one is cardiovascular disease. So a woman has a 22 times more risk of dying of a cardiovascular disease than breast cancer but the awareness related to breast cancer seems to be disproportionate out of proportion to what uh, we, we know the facts are. And if we now go on to actually the, what is the uh, initialism or acronym of health, and it is anxiety, body types, cigarette diet, economics, friends, guru, humor, and insurance, that is ABCD, FJHI. So the A part main deals with mental health, body type, addictions, diet, exercise, build with the physical health. This deals with the material health, financial health, social health, spiritual health, and these are all support structures that we. So if we follow this and maybe explain to our friends, relatives, and patients in this way, probably it's easier to remember as well. One of the commonest stressors in our life is rumination. It is dwelling too long on negative events of the past. And the biggest predictor of mental health problems is this rumination. And there is a tendency to blame yourself for the problems. The second aspect is the greed, the comparisons, the superlatives. I'm the best in a town, but you may not be the best somewhere else. So that kind of a thing goes on in our minds. Ego, the perfectionism is a problem. The pursuit for happiness is a problem. Non-acceptance of our own inadequacies in profession as well. And the I, me, my, mine, all these are problem areas that we can identify. And our response to stress is, uh, as doctors, is completely different. When it comes to our own disease or disease of our kin, then we react very differently. And when we are caught in situations uh, we deal uh, very differently. In fact, don't worry, be happy is a most false statement ever made in this lifetime. Because if you ask the fish now and tell him that don't worry, be happy, he's not going to be happy with you at all. So idea is to react with emotions 
honestly and be honest with these emotions. And it is said that animals are very honest with their emotions. Look at the dog here on the right hand side, calm and serene. And on the left hand side, it is obviously stressed. I'm not looking at the driver. I actually live in the house where one wife and two daughters, so I live in minority. So I can't show this slide otherwise, but just look at the driver. He's stressed here and he's obviously expressing it and he's calm and sitting on the right side. It is said that zebras don't get hypertension because they are not chronically worried about the lions. If they see a lion, they run and save themselves, otherwise get killed. But when they're grazing, they're not thinking of the lions. And this is what humans probably have lost into them and that has led to stress and other related elements. Another common problem in life is whether to use your heart or the brain or in your terms it is the right brain or the left brain activities. According to me actually you must use logic that is brain using decision. The heart decisions are good for three idiots. The name itself suggests the decisions made in that film. So Logical brain decisions are more likely to be correct percentage wise. Hard decisions are emotional, instinctive and likely to be rash. And failed logical decision causes less pain because you did your best, you reasoned out, you took the most logical decision and yet it failed. It's easier to accept than doing a rash decision and ruminating on it on a longer time. Time management becomes an extremely important issue for our stress management as well. And this is my own picture taken by me on from my old cell phone. Actually, I had not touched a camera in my lifetime, even with a barge phone. But come the smartphones and even I can make some decent pictures. This is from the Kerala beach. And I'm giving you my arithmetic of time management. Let's say 10, 10 hours of main medical work. That means... You should start working at nine and work till seven without any breaks, maybe a loo break here and there, or maybe some lunch break of 10, 15 minutes. How many of us really work that hard? So 10 hours of medical work is a generous dollop here. Then two hours for depending on which city you are, uh, commuting, getting ready, talking on the phone. Maybe one hour delay time in India, you have to always plan the delays. Social media time, it can vary. Seven hours, rest at night. Majority of that should be sleep. Exercise, one hour. Family and friends, one hour. Hobby and personal time, one hour. So this is 24 hours in one day. So two weeks, if you make a capsule of two weeks, you don't work on two Sundays. So you have 20 hours free in two weeks. Then you don't sit with family and friends every day for one hour. You get about five to six hours free. So if you plan your own activities, then you can do most of the things that you want and you feel never pressurized by time or you don't feel uh, that some activities you want to do and you don't have enough time to do it. One other aspect of mental health is being meditative. While you are doing an angioplasty, you have to be just there, be in the moment. Don't think of the relatives or the results or the outcomes or the complications. I think you just have to be there and that is being meditative. You don't have to learn scientific meditation for that, but just learning to be in the present moment is good enough. From A, from a mental health problem, we'll go to the B body types. Actually, I could have shown up maybe a Priyanka Chopra here, but times have changed. So I thought I would show a man instead with six to eight packs. And the body types uh, matters a lot. It's a typical uh, Ethiopian or Nigerian man who runs a marathon at the end of 42 kilometers. He's tired but ecstatic about his win. And the Indian counterpart looks like this. Look at the differ biggest difference between them is the central obesity. And he is just taking a dukki in the Maili Ganga and feels ecstatic about it. This central obesity has been the biggest health problem of India as of today. And we all as doctors have to think about it. And of course, we know that above the age of 65, all of us have to avoid frailty, whether it is in ourselves or our patients or our parents or our elder relatives. Ideal parameters, again, I'll just go over the healthy parameters, BMI, blood pressures, sugars, total cholesterol below 117 without anything else. Otherwise, you have to come down below 
70 if you have a, some years of diabetes or other risk factors. And then of course B12, vitamin D, all these are quite well known. Then comes the aspect of addictions or let's, I call them the electric plug. Now this young girl does probably knows that there is danger in putting in this key into the life plug. And I shudder to think what will happen to her after a few seconds she does that. So in the younger age group, lack of knowledge or curiosity drives you to electric plugs. And this continues between the age of 15 and 25. The smoking, the tobaccos uh, come into picture and they form the electric plugs of that age group. Between 25 and 30, maybe the first college day or uh, the first job, from the milk bottle to Coke bottles, we change over to whiskeys and then when the liver gets spoiled, we start drinking bisleri waters. And in the ICU, finally, you need some proteins and then one day the candy gets lit. That is how bottles come into our lives starting from the age of 22 to 25. And they, of course, continue to be with us as addictions or electric plugs. Beyond that, from 30 to 40, I think the electric plug is a central obesity because by that time you are in practice for a few years, few children, then a lot of parties, uh, no exercise. And this thing leads to 10 years of abuse, leads to a central obesity. And that forms the biggest problem of health, as I said. From 40 to 50, it is a time for the extramarital affairs because that is a time ripe for all this. You have some money, success, name, fame, and other things. But it is, I don't want to discuss the morality of that, but it is a social crime and one has to pay a price for it one day or the other. However, you try to hide the identity, I think it seeps through. And the one day uh, it all comes out into the open. Beyond the age of 50, I feel the electric plug is orthopedic injuries. And I don't mind getting a heart attack at the age of 55 because I know I can be back to work within seven days. But a hip fracture or fracture femur probably uh, mm, is worse than any other thing. So orthopedic injuries beyond the age of 55 or so become important. And of course, uh, some people have the addictions of fitness. That also I feel uh, is an addiction of some kind. And of course, we all can get addicted to social media. Look at this girl. Uh, she is, of course, a girl with a ear plug also in the grave. From mental health, we go on to diet, which is, uh, I think it should be predominantly vegetarian, fat, low fat, low carb, controlled gluten, controlled bakery restricted and good protein diet. Mufa dominated oil. Now, virgin olive oil is the best Mufa oil. Abroad, it is difficult to find virgins and in India, it is difficult to find olive oil. So the best Mufa oil for us, it is uh, actually groundnut oil. Um, Moongfali tail. And then you have less than one liter per person per month is what you have to follow. Unprocessed natural food is all common sense. Portion eating and forced eating. This fill up your plate once and finish that. There should be no second helping of whatever, whether you like the dal or the chapati. And if you can't kind of start eating that way, you remain very, very controlled. Forced eating is of Indian tradition. If you want to your guests to die early, probably you should force feed them. Um, Hunger-based portions is easy to understand. Eat for the body, not for the tongue. That means during the day, what we do is coffee, tea. And they can easily make them sugar-free drinks. And of course, eating for body, not for tongue is easy to understand. It should be a sanskar on the uh, dining table for children from the age of five rather than, or apart from teaching them etiquettes of fork and spoon, probably what to eat and the dieting sanskar becomes more important. And this is my famous 90 to 10 ratio. We eat about three times a day, that is 100 times in a month. So out of those 100 times, 90 times I will eat for the body and 10 times I will indulge into the bhajiyas and the dollops of butter or whatever. I love this food. But I leave it for 10 times in a month. So it about once or twice a week is what I allow myself that luxury. It's not cheating. It's indulging in a positive way. Um, breakfast, lunch, dinner pattern. If you have this kind of breakfast, lunch, dinner pattern, 
your waistline gets better. If you eat a big dinner and go off to sleep, probably they will, uh, your fat will get all stored on the uh, tummy and you will have a central obesity. Exercise uh, paramount importance because even a very fit person like Dhoni who is in sports need to be exercising to remain fit. For us who are not in sports like activities, we have to make special efforts, efforts to uh, get to the exercise. So it improves cardiovascular efficiency, it improves muscle tone, prevents osteoporosis, improves sense of well-being, good stress management, improves collaterals in the heart, improves vascular age of the person, improves longevity. All these are advantages. And if you all if this all doesn't convince you, at least for this aspect, you should be exercising daily. And the exercise would be about 150 minutes per week which is about 30 minutes, five sessions, which can be a good combination of aerobics, weights, yoga. And of course, in addition, good sex life also, I feel is a part of a good physical and mental exercise. Because sex in a routine sexual activity is like 20 minutes on the treadmill burning about 150 kilocalories. So it's a very good calorie burning exercise as well. And it is an emotional catharsis. The orgasms benefit a lot, whether they are through self-gratification or otherwise, because they release oxytocin and endorphin in the brain. You are better judges of this. And age is no bar for sex, actually. It's, I'm sure all of you understand very well. The next aspect is the financial or the material health. These are all my free thoughts. Uh, you should have your own and you can easily question me or just destroy my thoughts in your own mind. See, all neurologists after five years of decent practice are in upper middle class bracket of the society. So that means a decent home, car, schools, foreign holidays, everything is possible after five years. We have a good EMI capabilities at the end of five years of a good neurology practice. After 10 years, a decent bank balance gets added to this. But even after 50 years of practice thereafter, there is, you can't step beyond that. So. Uh, after 10 years, probably it is reduced, better to reduce the number of hours and increase the charges of your fees so that you get an excellent balance of that. There will be some 5 to 10% of neurologists who are interventionalized or even amongst lawyers, the Supreme Court lawyers, and they add earn handsomely, but we are not talking of those. We are talking of us, 90% who would uh, do a normal regular practice. The additional income will come from non-medical means, like uh, you start a medical college or hospital where your presence is not required. The biggest bane in our practice is that every time our own physical presence is required. So if you get into an activity where without your presence, you're earning, probably that's the only way to make extra income and despite the advancing, advancing age. And of course, if you are good in investment, you will make extra money. Because finally, what is success if you look at this x-axis and y-axis? Two years, able to walk. Four years, no shit in your pants is success. 12 years, have friends is success. 18 years, able to drive is success. 20 years, able to have sex. And 35 years, able to make money. 35 to 50 years, cut on this side. Make money, able to have sex, 60 years. Able to have drive, 72 years able to have friends, 75 years, able not to shit in your pants is 80 years, and able to walk is 90 years. So it's a parabola, and I'm sure uh, you know exactly what I want to say. You run after, don't run after this, just keep doing activities, it will happen to you, may or may not happen to you. So, unhe kamyabi mein sukun nazar aya to wo taurte gaye. Hame sukun mein kamyabi nazar aai, to hum wahi thair gaye, is what you should decide which side of the fence you want to be. And search for happiness or success is the seat of unhappiness, really. And you just keep performing your duty. Just be. Success may be the byproduct of your activities and the activities which you are, we are trying to think aloud uh, together. This is a WHO survey it says for staying alive, the big, most important is your social integration and maybe in close friends. A small group of core group of emotional core group is what matters most. Quitting smoking, quitting boozing, flu vaccine, they are all okay, but the highest marks are for close relationship and social integration. 
So this is a group of friends. This is a picture of 1975. So it's a 45 year old picture. That's me on your extreme left. And that's Dr. Sudhir Kothari, very hairy or hirsute looking Sudhir Kothari at that time. And we continue to be friends. Even today we meet every, even on Zooms, we meet every Thursday. And we now look like this. All of them are laughing at me who is uh, taking the photograph. And why we keep laughing like this and together we are because we know that there is a child in all of us. And when we meet, we unearth a child, uncover that child, meet without any inverted commas. And that leads to charm of life and that gives a tonic to live better. Uh, if you look at these two towels, you'll realize that there is a grasshopper here. So it is said that every corner of the towel is important. Who, and who said that? It is this man, Robert Mugabe of Zimbabwe. He said, respect every corner of the towel because whatever wiped your face today could have wiped your backside yesterday. That means whether you meet a person in a lift or your class four servants or your maids or your people around you, your neighbors, everybody is important to you because how each one will react to you in your life, uh, you are not today. You have to do it with utter humbleness or respect, treat everyone well, probably it makes a huge difference. And be a very good listener. Look at this statue, the way it is made, even the hummingbird feels that I should hum my woes to this statue. I'm sure it will affect your friends and uh, people around you. This is one of my best photographs, the young traditional Muslim couple driving their son to school for a fancy dress parade, dressed as Sri Krishna. A little bit of social integration is what matters most. I think we live in a decent country. We don't want to make problems by adding other woes to our own lives. I think Indian let that be our only religion. I am a born Lingayat, so I don't know. One party feels that we should be called Hindus. The other party feels we should not be called Hindus. But I am happy to be um, my religion to be Indian and I am ready to live by it. The difference between the haves and the have-nots, I don't think there should be a wrestling war in them. In fact, the haves must protect. I leave it for you in the even in this COVID situation, there is a lot of talk about collective well-being and circular economy. I leave it to you. I forget, I, I'm sorry about the typo, but it would. I leave these two um, terminologies to you to think about. Basically, it amounts to looking after people around you. I may be powerful enough to look after ten people around me. Somebody else would be powerful to look after hundred around him. But each one of us, those who are haves. If they look after people around them, have not, probably we live in a better community and a nation. G for Guru, where we spiritual health starts. In uh, 1992, I did a course called Sadh Samadhi Yoga, and this is Rishi Prabhakar, who unfortunately Guruji is no more. But the only 15 days was enough to spur a different thought process in me. Um, it's not about God, it's not about religion, but it's about a bigger picture. It's about the egoless state. It's like being a child and identify your role in the society. So one of the things that were taught to us was like right from childhood, we know that there are some things which are acceptable to us, but they are not available. And people, whatever is available may not be acceptable to us. And I'm talking about the fantastic goggles that she is wearing. So acceptance of whatever you've got is a very spiritual thing. It's not a passive statement. It's a very active statement that I accept this as my problem or my success and I, my reaction to that will be equally good or bad, equally good. Another aspect to learn about spirituality is each one's birthright to have a point of view. Now, you will take a moment to think whether this man is sitting and the girl is standing or the girl is sitting and the boy is standing. See, the truth is only one, like that it is for every fight, that is only one truth. But there could be two sides of the opinion and respecting the other side does make a difference, I'm sure. These three children are supposed to undergo open heart surgery in the next half an hour. The photographer, that is myself, talks to them, tells them a story or something, and they are least bothered about what's going to happen after half an hour. They come off with fantastic natural smiles. 
can we do it as adults probably not because we don't live by our own five senses given by nature nature actually has given us only five senses we are born with it and we are supposed to live the moment we are talking about the future the anxieties even in a dental opd we cannot smile so forget about open heart surgery so in this covid situation what we need to do is survive today don't brood about the indian economy or the world economy we are all doomed this is apocalypse there is no need to do that just do whatever you need to do today and nature will look after you if at all and to all do all this i don't think you have to run around and go anywhere else go to the himalayas it's not required if you want to be a sanyasi it should be in sansar that means in your normal day to day life so it is like your patient your opds your eegs your hospital admissions and if you take a look at them in a little different way the same picture is a wonderful picture happening around you evolving around you all that you have to have is the antenna to accept this appreciate it and live life to the fullest by all kind of health that are around us insurance all of us should be insured to at least one bhk cost in your own city because you know how icu ex uh, um, expenses are today we don't want to blame anybody that is the reality of life even a road traffic accident and uh, five days in the icu would cost you lakhs of rupees so there should be health budget of the family this is especially for people around us we should tell all our relatives and friends to have a health budget the third child concept is that normally we should have two children in the family the third child should be health for health of everyone should be looked after by this separate budget made whether you have additional medical insurance or not is up to you to decide so it is said that attitude is everything in life a pessimist feels that the glass is half empty and the optimist feels that the glass is half full these two everyone knows look at this spiritualist he feels ye pier hai nahi maya hai maya and the realist astitvavadi is the one who finishes the glass whether it is half full half empty maya not maya doesn't matter nectar of life and to be enjoyed that is what attitude makes a difference and our attitude as doctor should be health tops and the health is physical health material health mental health spiritual health and of course social health as well and we are intellectual enough to understand all these aspects of health and we can be healthy and keep everyone around us very healthy i called all doctors as health preachers of the society so i should pledge today or whenever i should do i shall do my best to look after all my health the onus is on me to be a role model for health for my family my friends and my social circles i shall refrain from any kind of addictions and electric plus i shall not be a neurotic when it comes to my own or my kin's illness and i shall aim active life of adequate length we have always been taught a lamba life long length of life the all the so called yogas and meditation and everything finally leads adds to some years at the end of the life i think we should have activities which keep us active till our death i think that is how i look at it i don't know how you look at these aspect of length of life i feel adequate length with active life is what we should look at so we looked at all this acronym of anxiety uh, mental health body types these were all three physical health financial health social health spiritual health and added to that humor i think the a little laced with humor you could sit through that uh, half an hour 35 minutes otherwise most could have gone off to sleep uh, i thank you very much for a patient listening i don't know how many questions will come because the questions will be all of more subjective or spiritual answers to that so i know we can have some discussion and i am open to suggestions thank you thank you thank you jagdish uh, ashok uh one minute are you muted yeah okay yeah, the first question would be about your uh, distribution of your food so breakfast like a king and a, and a lunch like a farmer dinner like a pauper now to take this uh, model forward in the marathi press especially there is a big controversy or someone who says have five meals a day 
and someone says have two meals over two meals over 16 hours intermittent fasting so what would you think is the right way of going about it because you believe in this intermittent fasting that reduces your LDL that reduces your blood pressure controls your diabetes improves your cardiovascular health or do you believe in the five small meal uh, uh, theory so Traditionally, all these years, uh, it was three major meals and two meals in between. That is what we've been following. Intermittent fasting is a uh, maybe fad or some uh, thing added in the last few years. And if somebody has a problem, maybe a pre-diabetic or obesity, maybe it does have a definite role on a day-to-day -day basis. Intermittent fasting may have its advantage, uh, but I would go by traditional wisdom. Okay, there is another interesting question that uh, since the life of a neurologist, and I suppose a cardiologist also, is so stressful because of patients irritating us, should we incorporate mindfulness practice in a day-to-day -day life to get away from the irritation of patients irritating us or, or what have you, uh, so mindfulness practice. Is that I think has given you pointers. One has to build on these pointers on your own. That's also. Yeah, yeah, of course. There is no doubt that we leave uh, our medical practices stressful. So I've given you just the pointers. How to, use, how to use them in your own life is left to you. I feel I said that live in the moment. Like whenever the patient is troubling you, probably you suffer for some time. And then again, go back to your routine. So if you break your life into those compartments, it is easier. So then you can, don't carry things home. All these things are, again, traditional wisdom. I don't have to add anything to it. But learning that art and actually pra practicing that makes a difference. I don't think uh, additional of somebody learns a technique of this and technique of that. If you have, like, for example, meditation, I tried it several times, but I could not manage it. But being meditative is possible. If you are with the patient, you are with the patient. If you are at home with your family, you are with the family. If you break that life into compartments, you call it mindfulness. Yes, why not? It should be done. Uh, is, uh, again, uh, in this particular group, among the neurologists of Maharashtra, there are at least 10 dedicated marathon runners. <laughs> I mean, absolutely dedicated people. Do you have any word of caution for them? Yeah, I mean, with Sudhir... Uh, there is a lot of intermittent the cardiologists keep saying that... Now, we have always said no. Um, marathon running, if you have been running from younger age group, it is all right. But if you start late, I think a um, lot of cardiology, cardiac-related problems have occurred on the badminton course, squash course, and marathon running. All three have been problem areas. Those who are not used to it, uh, go into it with a lot of enthusiasm. Oh, 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 they're very dedicated yeah, guys, yes. but I don't know if they're not been in the correct training. No, if they go with the training and all, it is definitely possible. But there's a lot of peer pressure and competition. Highly dedicated, highly intelligent. That's not the issue. Mm -hmm. but, uh, yeah. That's and then also, the the cardiologists keep saying the marathon running can be dangerous to the heart. It is. Uh, and I'm more worried about the ortho injuries, actually. Not so much of the cardiac problems. Rahul, you want to take off? Rahul? Ah, Rahul, yeah, one minute. One minute. Ah. Yes. Rahul, yeah. Rahul, you can speak? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good. Yeah, Good. there is one more question. Uh, uh, how to stop stress from work interfering in personal life? <laughs> That's a good one. Yeah, basically, as I said, compartmentalization. You have to train yourself. Keep telling yourself that when you are examining a patient, you are a doctor. You are traveling in a lift, you are a fellow passenger. You are driving a car, you are a driver. When you come home, you are a husband, you are a father. So if you keep doing that compartmentalization and identify your role, so called being in the present, it helps. And other activities like recreational activities, 
uh, as I said, uh, friends, social circles, all this will help ameliorate the situation. It also depends on your basic personality type. But main crux, main thing is to live that moment. That will going to reduce your stress. The problem, the problem is, uh, as a doctor, you are put here, and as a uh, son or a husband or whatever, you are uh, at a different level. And we get uh, tend to feel, you know, you want to be always at that higher level where people say, "My bab, my bab, doctor," you know. So you have to break that mental note in your mind. I have uh, one more question. Uh, his, no, don't it? walk, run, no, do weights. No, no, Ashok, uh, can you repeat? Yeah, I couldn't hear the first part of it. Can I repeat it? Yeah. yeah. Okay. What I wish to know is, uh, do you have a specific advice to your patients and doctors? Run, walk, uh, weights, don't do weights, only don't run, just walk, just do yoga. No, don't do yoga. Oh, do you have any specific advice on exercise today? It can be very, very controversial. No, no. I think there is no controversy. If, if you are talking of a normal person, it's a different advice. And for individual limitations, like cardiac a different. So we'll talk of a normal person. So minimum, as I said, exercise time is about 150 minutes per week. So 30 minutes, five sessions, in which you have to do... Uh, Definitely aerobic activity brisk enough to increase your heart rate to say 80% of your target heart rate. You have to do weights, especially after the age of 50, uh, because you have to have bigger, better bone structure. That's why. And yoga is for flexibility. Actually, a good combo of the three is the best, depending on your personality, whether you like visibility, you may change things a bit. But I think this is what the basic principle is. And there is no controversy about this. Yeah. I think, uh, another one, I think many neurologists in Maharashtra, suppose in smaller towns or in district places, sound wind? Have, have I lost the sound or everybody has? No, I have lost. I lost it. Yeah. Uh, Rahul, can you repeat? Yeah. yeah, yeah, I will repeat. I will. Is it audible now? Yeah. Yeah. It's audible. Yes. Yeah. Now I was just asking that in many towns in Maharashtra, there are very few neurologists in small district places, and they land up seeing almost eighty to hundred patients per day in a day, which is really very stressful. What is your suggestion? How should they handle their uh, lifestyle in such situations? Oh, I made that suggestion. Actually, 10 hours of work, as I said. In 10 hours, whatever you can manage, you should be able to. You should have extra force so that you don't uh, overburden yourself. And you should delegate more responsibilities. So 10 hours, Monday to Saturday, is a lot of work. I think you can easily see um, at least 50, 60 patients definitely in that uh, period. So remaining is all, all individual skills, how to reduce the denseness of work, as we call it. But if anybody who is working from 9 a.m. in the morning to 7 p.m. without incessantly, without a break, can see 70, 80 patients, actually. It's just that we dilute the time a lot. And that's why we feel, oh, I work from 10 o'clock in the morning to 11 o'clock at night. So I think it's a question of uh, our, our time management inside those 10 hours. Uh, Dr. Anu Gaikwad asks how to handle forgetfulness. Oh. <laughs> It's a question to neurologists, I think. <laughs> <laughs> but I is, may have an answer for that. I'm neurologist because at least uh, nobody can beat me for forgetfulness. So I don't think it's a wrong question. Uh, 
Rahul, you want to tell something about how to avoid being forgetful? Uh, I think uh, about forgetfulness, I think so socialization, which is not now allowed in this COVID era, but socializing, mixing with people and whatever this solving uh, various uh, crosswords, driving, driving is a fantastic memory exercise. I think these are the some of the clues and again diet prevention of this uh, cardiovascular risk factors. These all will take care of, uh, I think, preventing dementia in future life. Yeah, but uh, let us uh, reassure Dr. Anu Gaikwad that being forgetful is not getting demented. Uh, being forgetful yeah. is, uh, is, is normal. I mean, only when his wife starts complaining, do something about uh, Anu, he's forgetting. Thing, then we'll bother about dementia. Sir, there is one comment from Dr. Meshram, sir, that Ashok Sirsat, sir, is looking quite slimmer today. <laughs> I have answered that question to him. <laughs> I got that question. <laughs> okay. Any more questions? Otherwise, we'll let Jagdish go. Okay, Jagdish. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Thanks a lot. Thank you.